Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to take a bit of a trip down memory lane because I wanted to go through my old bookshelves which are full of nostalgic YA books from like 2012. So you may have noticed that the past few videos I've been filming in a different space because I've been at my parents' house over the holidays. You guys keep calling me out on the fact that this plant is dying. I know, okay? Okay, first of all, it's not my plant, so it's not my fault. Second of all, it's been looking like this for years and it's still alive, so... Stop calling me out on it, okay? Anyway, today I'm gonna go back to my study accommodation. So before I leave, I thought it would just be fun to show you my old bookshelves in my childhood bedroom downstairs for some young adult nostalgia. So yesterday I kind of started cleaning up some stuff because honestly, the bookshelf was kind of a mess and I needed to make space for my study notes and my study textbooks. So I did like a mini bookshelf reorganization, which you can see me doing here. I filmed this clip yesterday. But now let's dive, let's dive into the past together and head down downstairs. Let's go. Here we are. Some of you might remember this place because I used to film my booktube videos in here for like the first one or two years that I did booktube. Here I just have all the books that I decided not to take with me to my study accommodation. And actually over there, oops. I have my manga collection. It's not much, but it's there. I thought it would be fun to just go through it chronologically. Let's zoom in a bit, shall we? Let's just start off with the YA series that got me into reading. I don't know a lot of people know this one, but it's the Wings series by April and Pike. It was about fairies. It was a love triangle. No one had any personality. It was peak YA and I loved it. But then of course, the, the big one, the big one that we have here is Twilight Books. The beautiful white covers. When I would write like my own stories, I would always think of what the covers would look like and it would always be something that was very similar to this style because I just thought it was so pretty. <laughs> oh, also in case you're wondering why I don't have a copy of New Moon, it's because I never read New Moon. I just skipped that book <laughs> because I heard that it was bad. So I just watched a movie and then moved on to Eclipse. Oh, how unbothered I was back then. I should bring that back. My favorite one might have actually been The Short Second Life of Brie Tanner. No, actually, I know what my favorite book out of the whole Twilight Saga was. It was this one. It says The Illustrated Guide to the Twilight Saga, and this was like full of information about Twilight and about the world, and it had all these like pictures of I think this is Bella's room. These drawings. Oh my god. I thought they were so cool. I loved the art style on this. Like, I'm not kidding when I say that this one was my favorite one. <laughs> then, of course, we got Dystopian. I mean, we're all aware of the Hunger Games. That's nothing new. Just wanted to share these really ugly Dutch covers of the Hunger Games. The Diversion Trilogy. I actually, I know this series gets a lot of hate. I still stand by the fact that Diversion was a really great YA dystopian. I even wrote an essay on it for uni about why <laughs> why Diversion is like such a great example of dystopian for teens and I will defend that, this book, until my death. These books don't exist, however. Okay, I want to bring up an old dystopian book and I want to know if anyone still remembers this one because I really liked it. Wither by Lauren de Stefano. Remember the book about this dystopian world where there was a virus that made everyone die at 21 years old? So women were like hoarded to breed and the main character was like kidnapped so she could go to this castle to this like wealthy rich dude to like give him children wild very wild i have part two i just never 
actually read this one. I just only read this one. Also, look at these covers. I like that. I think the fun thing about these dystopians is that so many of them, including this one and like Delirium and the Match series, they were so popular, but you don't hear anyone talking about them anymore at all. Same thing with the YA paranormal books that came after like the success of Twilight. Like I read Fallen, you know, those kind of books. I don't really hear anyone talking about them anymore, except for Daughter of Smoke and Bone, because that one also has new covers coming out. Just a question for you guys. I was debating whether I should pick up Daughter of Smoke and Bone because I was kind of afraid that it was gonna be like all the other paranormal romance YA books from back in the day that we used to love, but that I would probably not like anymore if I read them now. But Daughter of Smoke and Bone seems to be one of them that still holds up maybe, as in people still talk about it and people still read it now and people still like it. Let me know if I should read it. Also, here's another example of just YA dystopian that was really bad. These are the Dutch covers of the 100 books. <laughs> yes, the books that the series was based on. I haven't watched the show, but let me tell you the books. They are not worth it. They're really bad. Oh, and of course, how could I almost forget? Well, what's this called in English? Shatter Me by Tahera Mafi. Then I just want to show you a book a book series that I was like a huge fan of. I read it before I joined booktube, so I never talked about it on booktube, but I just, I, I'm, I'm kind of looking for all the fans in the audience right now. Please tell me these books, the Iron Face Saga. Don't look at the ugly covers. These books were so much fun. It was an urban fantasy about a girl, Megan, that went to this alternate fantasy realm that was based on a Midsummer Night's Dream. And it was so much fun. So, so far I've been showing you Dutch translated books, so let me show you the first English book that I read willingly. Like, of course I had to read English books for school, but this was the first book that I like, on my own idea. That's not English. Clearly reading the English books did not improve my English. <laughs> The first book that I bought that I was like, yeah, I'm gonna read this in the original English language, that was The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I know people like to dunk on John Green, but I'm gonna be completely honest that I absolutely adored this book. I gave it five out of five stars. I bawled my eyes out and I was in love with this story. I never actually read any of John Green's other works though. It's only happened to me, I think twice that I pre-ordered a book without having read any reviews of it yet because it wasn't out yet but just purely based on the synopsis I was like I'm gonna pre-order this book this sounds so cool I'm gonna review it on my channel and it's gonna be like such a great fantastic story and both of the times I ended up regretting that decision I mean you may remember recently it was with the shadows between us a few years ago I did the same thing with Assassin's Heart which was also a book about assassins and rivaling families. It sounded really cool, so I pre-ordered it and it was a huge disappointment. An author that I haven't talked on my channel for quite a while, but that I do want to give some love is Rosamund Hodge, who wrote Cruel Beauty, which was a, a fairy tale retelling of Beauty the Beast. And this one, Crimson Bound, which was a retelling of uh, Red Riding Hood, still one of my favorite enemies to lovers romance YAs. I'm always a bit afraid of recommending books that I read like years ago because I'm scared that they don't hold up anymore. Okay, we are nearing the end here. So I also still have the first three Throne of Glass books that I read. Sometimes you just have a bunch of books and the moment you hold them, it just immediately transforms you back to the moment that you read them. I don't know if anyone else has this, but the Throne of Glass books have an extremely specific smell. I can't even, if I, I'm suddenly in 2015 again. It's just the Throne of Glass books. They have this smell, this very specific smell that tells me summer of 2015. Ooh, another one. This book, does anyone remember it? We Were Liars. Either you were completely blown away by the plot twist or you like saw it coming and you were one of those people that were like, mm, I saw it coming, I don't understand why no one saw this coming. But yeah, 
I was very blown away by this one. On a trip down memory lane, do people still talk about Rainbow Rowell? I feel like no one ever talks about her again. I read Fangirl and Eleanor and Park. Wasn't a big fan of Eleanor and Park, but I did love this one. And I just related to the main character so much. This one also has a very, oh my God. This one also has a super specific smell. Is this weird? Am I, am I being weird? I'm not the only one that does this, right? Like. This room is a pretty dark room, so that's why when I'm still filming here, it never really worked because it would just get dark really quickly and a lot of my videos are just very poorly lit. Anyway, I'm just feeling super nostalgic about this book. Like, honestly, oh, this makes me happy. I highly recommend anyone to go through their old books that they read like five to ten years ago and just appreciate them because it makes me feel very happy. Is there anything else that we can talk about? Oh, and then the last one, this is the last book that I read before I moved out to my uni accommodation um, and before I stopped making videos for like two years. That is Caraval. I never talked about this much on my channel. I just remember that I really, really didn't like it, like at all, but I still have it. I don't know if anyone else does this, but I like to hold on to books that I really didn't like. I unhaul books that I have no feelings on but if I really liked a book, but also if I really didn't like a book, I keep it. Because I feel some sort of strong emotion towards it, I want to keep it and I don't want to put it away. Sounds counterintuitive, but that's how I do it here. <laughs> okay, it's getting very dark in here right now. Honestly, making this video made me very happy. Here's my mandatory announcement that you should follow me on social media if you want to and like this video if you enjoyed it. And most of all, I just really hope to see you again in another video and I will see you soon. Goodbye. Oh my god, I completely forgot about this book that was just laying there, so I'm just mentioning it here for the people that are still around. Legend, which was, I'm gonna be quite frank with you, one of those super amazing dystopian books back then, but I remember nothing. Like, I just remember that I enjoyed it, but when I think about this book, it's just blank in my brain. There's nothing. I don't remember anything. I just remember that I enjoyed it. Bye.